Good morning. Today on Business Success in Six with Stacy, I have Lauren Brinkman here from Underdog Pet Rescue. Hi, Lauren. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Thank you for jumping on today. Now, you have a very unique organization that you're going to share a lot with us. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions, six questions about your organization? Oh, that'd be great. Awesome. So when you describe um, Underdog Pet Rescue, how do you describe it? Um, well, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and um, we our, our main purpose is to save animals who are in shelters that are overflowing and might face euthanasia when space runs out. Um, so we bring those animals up to us in Wisconsin, mainly from southern states. Um, oh. Um, we put them in our foster homes that are all volunteers and we get them vetted at our vet clinic and find them homes. That's so amazing. Thank you for that work. That's definite purposeful work. Um, I just, I'm curious why so many, why do so many Southern states have an overflow? Um, well, we focus on rural poor areas of Southern states so that we can really feel like we're helping animals who have no adopter pool. Mm -hmm. um, so in a lot of these areas, animals are treated a little bit differently, um, not everywhere, but in some of these areas where um, they might be, you know, dogs running free in the streets, um, animals who are just let to be farm cats and they kind of get out of control because there's not a lot of veterinary options for spay and neuter. Mm -hmm. um, so we just find that the Midwest is a pretty great place to be a homeless animal, <laughs> um, as is like the New England area. Um, but once you get into the southern states, it's just there's, that's where there's an overpopulation and mm -hmm. a low adopter pool. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for describing that a little bit more. I know that's not one of the questions I normally ask, but it, it's such a unique organization. And again, you're doing great things. And I was just curious about that. Um, so what were your plans when you started your business? I know we were talking earlier, you said you started it in 2012. So what were your plans then and how have they changed? Yeah. Um, I had the goal of um, saving 10 dogs a year when I started underdog. And um I had recently moved to Madison from the Milwaukee area, and I volunteered at a number of different places over the years, and I had some ideas of what I wanted to do. I wanted to have um, kind of a boutique experience versus a sad humane society experience that some people, you know, some people feel too sad to walk into a humane society. Mm -hmm. um, and I also wanted to provide good customer service. Um, so take my sales background and kind of focus on that. Um, yeah. So our, our goal was to just save 10 animals. I, I suckered a few friends into helping me out, serving on my board, and um, took it from there. But we started in April of 2012, and um, we saved 100 animals by the stroke of midnight on, the, on New Year's Eve that year. So Wow, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and yeah, so it was, it's been a wild ride. Um, now we take in between 150 and 200 animals a month and find them homes. That's incredible. That is so cool. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. So I guess your, your plans definitely have changed since 2012. <laughs> yeah. And it's been interesting because, you know, sometimes like during COVID, we had more adopters and more fosters than we ever had before because people were stuck at home and they wanted to do something useful. Um, sure. And it was amazing. We had more adoptions than ever those months, but um, it was interesting having to create the infrastructure, <laughs> you know, having the leadership volunteers and um, people in our vet clinic to be able to accommodate that many more animals coming through. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. There, there, they, what do they say? The COVID puppies and the COVID dogs. Oh, he or she is a COVID dog. Cause yeah, people did have more time to really focus on them and take care. Some people had more time. Others had less time. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's pretty obvious the biggest way you impact the community, but I'd love for you to share a little bit more about how you impact the community, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like you said, it's it's pretty, like our adoptions are pretty straightforward. Um, take in the animals, get them vet services. And um, really soon after I founded Underdog, we realized that if we paid or had volunteer vets on staff, we could save a lot more animals. Mm -hmm. um, so now we do have our own vet clinic that's open to the public. So people can come and see us and support us by bringing their pets to us instead of a regular clinic. Um, and then we also see all the animals that come through. Um, so not only do we see those animals, get them all ready for adoption, we've started offering um, uh, low cost veterinary services for low income individuals. Okay. 
So that's something we're really proud to be doing, to be helping people who maybe can't get care for their pets. Um, mm -hmm. that's and we also, sorry. And then we also um, opened up a chapter of the Street Dog Coalition, and that um, we go to parks where there might be larger homeless populations and provide absolutely free vet care for people who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. Wow, that is incredible. You know, and I think about how much animals can actually do for humans too. And you think about, doesn't it like lower our, our blood pressure if we're petting an animal, if, if, if it's not like violent, obviously? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think there's so many benefits that animals have in our lives. And, you know, you see those bumper stickers, who rescued who, and it's kind of cheesy, but, you oh. know, a lot of times animals really do, um, save us in different ways, whether they're just there for us um, to pet. And like you said, lower our blood pressure, reduce our anxiety. Um, so it's, it's really a, a, a two-way relationship. Yeah. Well, and I was reading yesterday in a mindful magazine that children um, read, the children who read with dogs or two dogs actually become more confident in their reading abilities too. So I think that's really just, it, it just keeps going on and on how you impact the community. So <laughs> Thank you. What is one challenge you have faced that other business owners could learn from? Um, so I, I, I didn't know anything about starting a vet clinic. I have no veterinary background. I sold equipment to nursing homes in my previous life. Okay. Um, so I, um, one challenge was needing to confidently enter a field that I wasn't super familiar with and, um, developing relationships with other veterinarians and, convincing them that we're not taking away business from their for-profit businesses by doing what we're doing. Um, so I'd say that was my biggest learning curve was mm -hmm. um, learning how to open the vet clinic. And now we're at a point, um, it's been through many iterations, but we have two amazing vets on staff now who kind of run the show and, um, and a great support staff there. So um, that was probably the, the biggest um, challenge. But I guess the other thing is, um, you know, we kind of talked about this earlier. Um, we are a nonprofit organization, but, mm -hmm. and our biggest thing is taking care of kittens and puppies and getting everyone homes. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, really nice a lot of times to be able to do that kind of stuff. But if we don't focus as um, running as a business, we can't keep on doing that work. So mm -hmm. um, I really had to focus on that as much as I, um, was focusing on how my heartstrings were being pulled to, to make sure I was creating a sustainable organization. That's very, very important. Yeah, we do have to run nonprofits like businesses in a lot of ways, except for at the end of the day, there's just not the end bottom line, but you have to make sure that you have the funds to support, you know, all those different things that you need in order to run. So what do you think the future looks like for you? I know you, you went from, you know, saving, rescuing 10 pups a year on. What does the future look like? And do you have an exit plan? Um, so I think the future for us looks like, um, growing, um, you know, adding, doing what we're doing only on a bigger scale. We're always looking for new foster parents in the Madison area, um, more adopters. It seems like as many foster parents as we have, that's basically the number of animals we can save. Um, and we have 10 people applying for almost every single animal that you see on our website right now. Um, wow. So there is a, a need for um, Madison is in Wisconsin in general is a great place. We have so many people who want to adopt any animal, whether they have three legs or one eyeball, <laughs> you know, people just want to help. Mm -hmm. um, so growing in the sense of just boosting our numbers, um, being able to offer more veterinary care, eventually adding to our vet staff. And in terms of an exit plan, um, you know, we just hope to be continuing what we're doing into the future. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and um, we just hope to keep on growing and eventually have a building that we own and um, be able to offer more services there. That's awesome. Very good luck with that. I'm sure that will happen sooner than you even think. Um, all subjects open. What inspires you most? Um, so, you know, there's there's big things that help. There's a wonderful local foundation that just did our, our largest match. They gave us $50,000 when we raised that from our, it was, it was a match to what people were donating. So that was super inspirational that somebody used their money to help us do what we're doing. Um, but honestly, what makes me cry <laughs> is when I see little um, fundraisers that children do in the community. Um, you know, a, a child who is doing a bake sale 
and sends in five dollars and fifty cents <laughs> you know oh, <laughs> something totally. small like that. it's just you know it's seeing compassion in young people mm. um you know seeing the children in the foster families that we have um scooping litter and helping you know the animals um get cared for each day it's it's seeing the next generations um wanting to help and seeing more you know beyond themselves that they're not the only important thing in the world that there's so many other creatures and, and people that need our help that's beautiful that's extremely inspiring thank you for sharing that so if somebody wants to get in touch with underdog pet rescue how would they do that yeah, um, we have a website, underdogpetrescue.org. Um, we like to tell our stories on Facebook, so you can kind of follow the journeys of a lot of the animals we take in. Um, it's Facebook um, is uh, underdog pets. I'm sorry, underdog pet rescue. And our Instagram is underdog pets. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Lauren. I'm looking forward to connecting with you in the future. And thank you for the great work you're doing. Yeah, I appreciate the chance to tell people more about us. Absolutely. You have a good day. You too.